so I'm here to talk about World Suicide Prevention Day, which is on September the 10th this year. Um, hopefully you get something really useful from this briefing session. I've on this next slide put who I am, what my, my title is, just because it is confusing um, and my email address. So if there's any queries, any questions, anything you would like to talk about after this, um, but don't want to raise as a question, please feel free to email me. Um, my inbox is always open. I'll, any questions, if I don't know, I can point you in the direct, the right direction at the very least. Um, so I work right across Teesside. My role is, um, as it says there, preventing suicide tees. So I work for Hartlepool, Stockton, Middlesbrough and Redcorn Cleveland. So I work right across Teesside, um, basically where the need is. So I work with the real time alert system and where we feel like there's more need in one area, then that's where I'll focus my attention. And then obviously needs change and that we, I'm kind of flexible and fluid like that um, in work at least. Um, so this year, and for the past two years, the theme for World Suicide Prevention Day is creating hope through action. Um, on September the 10th, we're asking people to join together with thousands of other people from across the world to raise awareness and prevent suicide. The next slide I'm going to show you is the um, the slide from the, the World Suicide Prevention Day. It's, it's their um, information. So I'll, I'll play that first. Just got to bear with me because it takes ages for it to kick in. There we go. And it always plays at the wrong place. I haven't got any audio here, um, Andre. I don't know if it's just me. No. OK, there is a section when you're sharing. Um, I believe if you go into share and it's actually got uh, uh, some options there. Yeah, there's an option at the top when you click on the share button it says share content, include computer sound. And that's usually okay. the bit that, that is left unchecked. OK, I'll do it after the this. It's just yeah. a, it, it's just a song. There's okay. no there's no words to this one. No worries. I like a song. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to go back a slide, hit that button and then replay it, it'll work. Yeah. The aim of World Suicide Prevention Day is that it gives organisations, individuals, um, commission services, people like yourselves to a, a chance to promote awareness about suicide, the mental illnesses associated with suicide, as well as suicide prevention. Um, organisations such as the IASP, which is the International Association for Suicide Prevention, and in the UK we have um, the NSPA, which is the National Suicide Prevention Alliance, play a key role in organising events right across the, the world and the NSPA in the UK um, to promote this event, um, to promote these conversations that we're having today. Um, and we hope that by exploring connection on World Suicide Prevention Day, it'll help us think about how we can reach out and connect um, and help ourselves and, and hopefully help others. 
There's um, a quote here by a gentleman called Rory O'Connor, who's the president of the IASP, um, who says, creating hope through action signifies the resolve to impart a new sense of purpose, empowering and equipping people with the skills and confidence to connect with someone they think may be struggling. Um, and that's the message. That's that's what, what the message is really clear. That's what we're asking you to do is create hope through action by reflect on, on how you can support somebody in your life um, who may have suicidal thoughts or be at risk of suicide. Encourage understanding, breaking down stigmas, having conversations um, and create a society where people have the confidence to take action, but also the confidence to speak out. Um, and hopefully together build hope for the future. Um, onto quite a sobering slide, I think this one is is quite, it brings us slap bang right down to earth. Every life lost represents someone's partner, child, parent, friend or colleague. For each suicide, approximately 130 people suffer intense grief or are otherwise affected. So for every one person who dies by suicide, approximately 135 people are, are affected by that one suicide. This amounts to 108 million people across the globe per year who are profoundly impacted by suicidal behaviour. Suicidal behaviour includes suicide, suicidal ideation and suicide attempts. And for every suicide, at least 25 people make an, a suicide attempt. And many, many more have thought have serious thoughts of suicide. Let's change that. Let's do something about it. And the way we do that, the way we change that is by these three things, by connecting, by communicating and by creating hope. How do we connect with people who are suicidal or having suicidal thoughts or displaying suicidal behaviours? Many people struggle at one point or another in their lives. Reaching out to someone could help them know that someone cares, that they're valued, that someone's there um, and help them access the support they need. There can be acres of support out there, but if you were not in the right mindset to access that, then it may as well not be there. Um, reaching out and helping somebody access that support is really vital. Connecting the dots as well, looking at how people are, asking how people are. Everyone copes and reacts in their own way. Here are some general signs to look out for, um, for people who are struggling with their mental health or maybe struggling with suicidal thoughts or behaviours. Some people may show several of these signs, maybe one or two, maybe none. Um, I won't read all of them, but there is some ones that really stand out. Those first three, we can see we can see people who become more restless, more angry, more aggressive, more tearful, more emotional. Um, things like being tired or lacking in energy sometimes we put down to a physical illness, not generally um, always a mental illness or or somebody really becoming despondent, not wanting to talk or be with people not wanting to do things they usually enjoy. Losing joy in things is a real sign of somebody who's beginning to really struggle um, with, with mental illness or, or with suicidal thoughts and behaviours or doing the things anyway, but just not getting the joy they used to from it. Um, we know things like using drugs or alcohol increases. Um, they find it cope to, to do everyday things. I had one person explain it to me as, they knew they needed a shower, but they didn't want to shower because they knew they would have to get undressed, get dried, get redressed, do the hair. So that one little thing had such a knock on effect to their life. They just didn't have the energy to do it. Um, so finding it hard to do those little everyday things that we take for granted. Not replying to messages or becoming distant talking about those feelings of helplessness or hopelessness or worthlessness or being trapped by their circumstances and not being able to escape um, their own thoughts. Changes in routine like sleeping more, eating more and engaging in risk taking behaviours. Again, you might not always be able to see these signs. People are very good at masking. Um, people are very good 
even if you say oh, you're all right people go yeah yeah I'm fine um these they may be more difficult to spot if you're seeing less of the people and one of those things obviously is becoming distant and not replying to messages that there is is a you know one of the biggest indicators if people are, are removing themselves from from you or from their community or their environment the second thing we talked about there was communicate um many people worry that reaching out is intrusive it'll make things worse it won't you'll soon be able to tell if the person you're talking to isn't comfortable or doesn't want to have that conversation with you if they don't want to open up what you've done is you've already introduced the fact that you're there for them that you're willing to have that conversation um once someone starts to share how they're feeling it's important to listen we think we listen all the time we think we we listen when people are talking to us but sometimes we don't sometimes what we want to do is fix problems um i'm a fixer i know i'm a fixer when someone starts to talk to me i think right what can i do to help how how do we do this what do i do what, how can i fix this um and sometimes that's not what people need sometimes people just need to be listened to um not having advice offered to them not trying to say oh yeah when i was going through this i can remember that they they just want you to hear them they just want their story or their issues or their their feelings heard by someone the samaritans have done a really great um little acronym here called shush which is about active listening and how we how we listen better um firstly show you care stop doing what you're doing stop making tea stop being on your phone stop typing on your computer sit down listen give the person eye contact make them know that you're there make them know that you're listening to just to them that they are the focus have patience it takes time and sometimes several attempts before someone's ready to open up sometimes they test the water a little bit can i tell you something that you know or, do you know what it doesn't matter it's fine i don't want to i don't want to talk about it they they're testing whether they you have the time for them they're testing whether they have the confidence to do it um so have patience if somebody says can i talk to you can i talk to you can i talk to you give them the time each time don't go oh, you know we, we talked yesterday or we you know i don't have time right now to talk to you we told we don't talk about anything they may be building up to it they may be trying to find a, a path to what they actually want to say use open questions um something that needs more than a yes or no answer are you feeling all right yes i am tell me how you're feeling that requires more of an answer that requires them to use their own words that requires them to have to really think about actually how is it that i'm feeling um you know could you could you tell me more about that could you you know could you tell me how you feel about this um ones that require yes no answers shut the conversation down very very quickly you retreat back after what you're doing they retreat back after what they're doing um stay back check you've understood them but it also shows them that you're listening um a good one that we you know my background's nursing a good one we're taught in nursing is so what you're telling me is or can i just check that you're saying so they you're checking your understanding of it but also that you're showing them that you've listened to the words that they've said um and have courage don't be put off by a negative response <clears throat> sorry and most importantly don't feel like you've got to fill every silence holding someone's hand while you sit in silence or being next to someone who's having a good cry is really important they need that empty space they need that time to just be to just sit um haven't filling it with a silent filling silences means that they're they not having time to process what's happening um i'm going to place a story next um this is danny's story um i haven't i haven't saved it on the best picture of danny bless him um danny was a professional rugby league player who suffered an injury at the beginning of a season um a life-altering injury um in which he 
will explain a little bit. I'm going to start it a couple of minutes in. Um, but Danny explains how that, that physical injury led to a breakdown in his his mental well-being and how that led um onto to the what happened with him. Um it can be quite emotional. So again, please take a couple of minutes if you need to afterwards. Um and bear with me while I try and get it to start at the right right place. At my bed in the morning and I'd just about make it to my couch. And then at night I'd get off my couch and just about make it to my bed. I couldn't even make it to the toilet. I couldn't do any school runs with my kids. I couldn't help my wife cook or clean. All the things that most adult parents would set for granted, I couldn't do, which meant I lost my job, I lost my career, and then we lost our family house. And I had two young kids and a wife that I couldn't support, and that's when I started suffering from depression really bad. And I couldn't get the thought of suicide out of my mind. Every minute of every hour of every day was how I was going to kill myself. It wasn't that I didn't love my kids, because I love my kids and my wife more than anything. It's just that I felt like I was a burden to it. I found myself in the middle of Wigan, in a car park on a park, and at the side of me in my car was a bottle of gin and a box full of pills that had killed half of Manchester. I had the strongest opiate drugs that you could get hold of, and I was going to take my own life. Now, for some reason, I didn't. Whether it was my kids, my parents, my wife that came to me, I don't know. But when I got back from that car park, I remember putting the drink and the drugs away. And what I stopped doing that probably saved my life, I stopped putting that mask on that men are really good at, what I was absolutely brilliant at. And I started showing my true feelings. My mum, my dad, my wife noticed the way I was acting. And about five days after the car park incident, my mum, my dad, and my wife came into the front room with a dining room chair. They banged the telly off, they sat in front of me and they said, right, Danny, we know what we've been through, we know what we've lost, but please tell us what's going on in your head. So I, you know, I opened up and I told them everything. So we decided to go and see my doctor. If I didn't speak to my mum and dad and my wife that day, I know for a fact now I would not be here. I'd have ruined my kid's life, I'd have ruined my parents' life. My youngest daughter wouldn't have even been born. I cannot imagine this world without her. I always thought, you know, when uh, years ago, I used to think if someone was to mention suicide, it'd make them do it, but it does the exact opposite. If someone's suicidal, suicidal, you're not going to put that thought into their head. But what that might do, it might just give that person, you know, that opportunity to say, yeah, I am feeling suicidal. And that's when help and support can be can be seeked and you know lives can be saved. I think that's a really good video of somebody who has been through it and come through the other side and obviously has the confidence to be able to talk about it. Um and very much what I said on the last side, how speaking about suicide does not put the thought in someone's head. Um, we often feel like mentioning the word suicide is going to plant a seed, but it doesn't. It gives somebody the opportunity who is suicidal to talk about it openly. When you're talking to the person you're worried about, you can mention services that you think would be useful and pass on contact information. You can also offer, offer to accompany them to appointments or agree on a point at which it might be useful um, to call them. Being with somebody while they phone services can be a, a real huge support. Somebody sometimes doesn't have the confidence to be able to do it alone. Remember, you can't force someone to seek help, um, but you can be there and let them know that you're there for them and will support them if they do so. I'm rattling through this, we're going to be finished much quicker. Um, the next point on that Venn diagram was about creating hope. I think this is a really difficult one because what is hope? What does hope mean? The dictionary says that hope is a feeling of, of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. I hope I win the lottery. 
doesn't mean it's going to happen. But what is hope? What does hope mean to us? What does hope mean to you? And what I'd like to do for a couple of minutes, if it's OK with you guys, I'm just going to play a little piece of music and I want you to just sit with that thought for a couple of minutes of what does hope mean to you? What does hope mean to your family? What does hope mean to your friends? What are we trying to create? Feel free to pop it in the chat. But, you know, if, if you want to share with me what your ideas of hope are, or just hold it in your own consciousness and, and think about it yourself. Um, but I'll just, I'll be quiet for a couple of minutes, well, for a minute or two, um, to just have a little think about what that actually, what that word actually means, what that concept actually is. difficult one isn't it difficult to quantify something or put words to something that we've ne we never really think about um i think the next lady the next speaker that i'm going to show you explains it so well um i love watching this this ted talk this woman's amazing um i'll let her introduce herself she's much better at it than i am again it's a very emotive video um so please take the time if you need it there's three parts of this video i'm going to play um so again bear with me while i get us in the right place this lady is called jill hayes and her ted talk if you want to look it up um was entitled depression suicide and the power of hope um yeah i'm going to play three little bits from this video The TED team warned me that when I was announced as a speaker, some of you would Google me. If that was you, you'll have discovered I keep a very low profile. So by way of introduction, I asked a few friends to offer a few words as to the kind of person I am. Jill is the kind of person who lives life to the full, who believes anything's possible, who laughs from the belly. No one said, the kind to suffer from depression. No one said the kind to attempt suicide. And yet, in the early hours of March 13th, 2013, I got out of bed, left my sleeping family, drove to a nearby bridge, and jumped. I don't remember the fall or the impact. I remember being found. I remember neck brace being fitted and being put into the ambulance. As I was being taken to hospital, two policemen would knock at my door and break the news to my husband. From there, the news would spread, causing shock and disbelief. Not surprisingly, I wasn't in great physical shape. Many of the bones in the right side of my body were broken. My lung had collapsed, my pelvis shattered. Neither was I in great mental shape. 
thinking I'd already hit rock bottom. I now contemplated a, a life as a social pariah, confined to a wheelchair with limited access to my kids. So how on earth had I reached this point? As I lay there in my hospital bed, fearing the worst, something very beautiful happened. A big tidal wave of love and kindness from friends, family, and community arrived to carry me through this dark chapter. This was shown in all sorts of ways, but what stood out were the many compassionate messages from people telling me of their own struggles with mental health. These were people I thought I knew, sharing sides I never knew existed. I had no idea the scale of this problem in our society. In my mountain of hospital post, I received a gift from George, a school friend of my son. This beautiful hand-knitted bookmark had a single word stitched onto it. That word was hope. This 10-year-old boy had summed up in one word what I so badly needed at that time. Hope is in short supply when you're depressed. Severe depression is a place of complete, total, and utter despair. I needed to understand that I'd been extremely ill, and I needed hope that I could and would recover. Suicide trumps them all. If someone you know is showing signs of depression, ask them how they're feeling. Give them permission to talk about it. Remind them there are places to go to get help. Samaritans, crisis line. Don't bury it, thinking it couldn't happen to us. Because it can. Some of us will have our own stories to share. I do realize it's not easy. I chose them to hide my own depression, but jumping off a bridge slightly blew my cover. Sharing our stories is so important. It sends a message to others that they're not alone, that we all struggle to cope from time to time, and that it is possible to find a way through this. Like me, you might be surprised to find out how much compassion and understanding is out there once we start the conversation. When I was at my lowest ebb, in the depths of despair, George's bookmark and his message of hope was really powerful. Together, through increased understanding, by challenging stigma, and just by talking, we can all provide hope. We can all be part of the solution. Thank you. I think she's amazing. I don't know how she had the bot to stand up and do that. It makes me cry every time I watch her. Um, so this is my call to action to you and to really action this on World Suicide Prevention Day, but afterwards and moving forward, take time, take time to notice what's going on around you with your family, your friends, your colleagues. By stepping closer and reaching in, we can be aware of those around us who need help. Take time to reach out and start a conversation. If you notice something is different, step closer, reach in, and we can help those with suicidal thoughts to reach out. Take time to find out what help is available for both you and others. By stepping closer and reaching in, we can help those in need by sitting in their pain. Every action connect us, can connect someone to life and to the help that they need. I have put a little resources and information page together feel free to copy it, look at the websites. Um, the helplines there are all 24 hour helplines. Um, my amazing 17 year old did say something to me yesterday because I do make my family sit and endure these presentations before I present them to use. Um, and my 17 year old said, but the Samaritans is only for people who feel suicidal. What about if I'm supporting somebody and I don't know what to do? Who do I ring? And that's what the Samaritans is for as well. If you are supporting somebody who has suicidal thoughts or is suicidal, the Samaritans will support you to support them in that moment. If they do not feel comfortable 
or they do not want to speak to the Samaritans, you can phone them as well. You can phone them and get support to support somebody who is um, exhibiting suicidal behaviours. A really important message, I think, that we don't share enough. People need support. Supporters need support. You can't pour from an empty cup, so please make sure that you take time for your own mental health and your own well-being. And again, I have put together a little look after yourself. We can't neglect our own self-care, especially when we're supporting somebody struggling with their own mental health. Maintain regular exercise, get a good night's sleep. The power of sleep is huge. Talk to somebody you trust about your feelings about the situation. Avoid alcohol and drug or stress relievers. They do the exact opposite. Do something that's meaningful and enjoyable for you, such as pursuing hobbies or interests. Get out into nature. The power of green light, the power of being outdoors is shown to boost mood. It's shown to improve mental health. Listen to your favourite relaxing or uplifting music. I'm a huge believer in meditation. Some people don't like it. Complete relaxation or deep breathing exercises. Keep a journal of your feelings, but most importantly, share the responsibility. You do not have to do it all on your own. If you are supporting somebody who is struggling with their mental health or is showing suicidal ideation or um, displaying suicidal behaviours, share the responsibility with somebody that you trust and they trust. You don't have to do it all on your own. And finally, if there's any questions, please feel free to either pop them in the chat and we'll go through them now or drop me a line on my email. This will be getting sent out um, with some links and Richie will include my email address within that. And obviously it's in the slides as well. So thank you very much.